The Panic of 1837 by Sarah Bernier and Natalie Amici. The Panic of 1837 was a financial crisis that affected a lot of the states in the U.S. Neither the president or Americans were prepared for the financial panic that swept across the country. Martin Van Buren was president when the Panic of 1837 took place. In 1832, Andrew Jackson ordered the withdrawal of federal government funds, about $10,000, from the National Bank. On May 15, 1833, banks were in disarray and government deposits were in jeopardy. The president issued a call for Congress to meet in September. Soon after the election of 1836, the country entered a severe economic depression. An unstable currency, a new shaky banking system, and seizing payment from investors and New York banks triggered the Panic of 1837 and a six-year depression followed. One of the causes of this crisis was that the prices of cotton, slaves, and land rose sharply in the years leading up to the Panic of 1837. Another cause was that the selling of land and tariffs on imported goods resulted in substantial federal incomes. This was a time period in which businesses and employment fell to a very low level. Land values dropped, investments declined, and banks failed. Thousands of businesses closed and many people lost jobs. In the South, cotton prices fell to record lows and cities could not afford food. Farmers plunged into debt and lost their money. There was an unstable currency and financial system, which meant there was little money. When the panic started, Wakes blamed Andrew Jackson and Van Buren for causing the panic. Van Buren believed in the idea of laissez-faire, which was where the government should interfere as little as possible in the nation's economy. The term laissez-faire was established in a meeting with Jean-Baptiste Colbert, for the general of finances, and a group of French businessmen, but headed by M. Le Gendre. It played a big role in the Panic of 1837 because it allowed the panic to run its course. The government came up with the Treasury system in 1840, which was a system that would keep banks from using government funds to prevent further bank crisis. Van Buren and his supporters saw this as a second declaration of independence. Connecticut, New Jersey, and Delaware reported the greatest stress in their trade districts. Connecticut was majorly affected. From around the 1800s to 1830s, the economy was in great shape. But then, in 1837, a panic struck, which caused employment rates to decrease significantly. Vermont's businesses and credit systems also took a hard blow. The United States President, Andrew Jackson, said, If the people only understood the rank and justice of our money and banking system, there would be a revolution by morning. What Jackson meant was if people only knew how negative the condition was, then people would start to do something about it and the depression would soon perish. The less the government interferes with private pursuits, the better for general prosperity, said Martin Van Buren. This quote means that if the idea of laissez fair was used, then we might defeat the panic. Andrew Jackson said, as long as our government is administered for the good of the people, and it is regulated by their will, as long as it secures us to the rights of persons and property, liberty of conscience, and the press, it will be worth defending. This means that no matter what hardships our country goes through, we should always defend it. In addition, local workers were also affected by the rising of food prices. The economy never really recovered until 1844. The government gained money that they had always hoped for and employment rates increased. In the end, the Panic of 1837 shattered hopes within weeks of inauguration and depression. <laughs>